Hi, I'm Mark Kenyon, Senior Instructor here at the St. Louis Guru Garage. Today we want to talk about hub bearing replacement, inspection, and preparation. What we have here is a 2006 Chevy Impala, and if you notice, when we move the wheel up and down, we get movement. That movement is from the hub bearing itself. Uh, this hub assembly is loose. Obviously, it's going to need to be replaced. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now we've removed all of our fasteners. We're gonna remove the hub assembly. Notice that the seal did not stay with the hub assembly. It's still stuck inside of the steering knuckle. We'll need to remove this old seal and clean and prepare the surface inside the steering knuckle to accept a new bearing. We've got the steering knuckle properly prepared and cleaned and the axles clean. We've installed our shield back on here. Now we're going to take our hub assembly, line it up on our axle, and then slide it into the steering knuckle, as you see right here. Okay. And if we've got everything cleaned properly, you should be able to move that in and out easily without any kind of resistance. Next thing we'll do is line up our bolt holes, put Loctite on our mounting bolts, and torque them down. All right, now we've got the hub assembly mounted. The bolts have Loctite on them. We've drawn them up with the ratchet. In order to provide the correct amount of clamping force to hold our bearing assembly to our steering knuckle, we need to use our torque wrench and torque these fasteners. Uh, these fasteners on this vehicle torque to 96 foot-pounds. As you can hear there, it's clicked. We provided the proper amount of torque. All right. Now that we have our brake assembly mounted, we have our rotor mounted, a couple of precautions as we uh, put this back together. One, we would want to make sure that there was no rust or debris on the back side of this rotor if it, we're using a used rotor that can interfere with the mount between it and the hub face. Also, we'd want to lock tight and torque the mounting bolts for the caliper bracket. They're again torqued to the manufacturer's specification. Now we're at the point of applying some Loctite to the axle threads and we're going to put our nut on and torque it down. Uh, we do not recommend using an impact gun to tighten this up because there again you can damage the bearing and not apply the proper preload needed. This is where you're going to need to use your torque wrench with the manufacturer's recommended torque on the nut itself. Now we have the nut bottomed out. You see the rotor wants to turn a couple different ways. You could get somebody to hold the brakes or to put a, a pry bar in between the studs that could damage those. I find the easiest method would be to take a screwdriver, slip it down into the fins of the rotor. And that will lock it in place and then we'll go ahead and apply the torque needed to properly preload that bearing. At this point, our hub assembly is finished. We need to put the tire on the vehicle, put it back into service. I'm Mark Kenyon, Senior Instructor here with the St. Louis Guru Garage. For more helpful tips on hub bearings or any other federal products, click on the links below or check out our YouTube channel.